In this how-to video, I hope to explain several methods to assist you in your creativity. However, I do plan to shatter some of your illusions. You're not Shakespeare. You will not be the next Tolkien, Yeats, or Hamilton. Trying to be anything or anyone in my experience just makes creativity harder, for you're attempting to fill shoes that were not built for you. First and foremost, all advice must be taken with a grain of salt. Read books, and read books on how to be a better writer. Take the parts and pieces that matter to you and run with them. Trying to take any of these as a whole is a fool's errand. I myself have found two pieces of advice that I have gleaned from other writers' how-to books. Yes, that's right, in over 10,000 pages read, I found two paragraphs that matter at least to me. The first is you should always write to someone or for someone. This can be the girl or boy that wouldn't give you the time of day in high school, yet you are still enamored with them. It can be the parent whose attention you so desperately crave, or an offspring that you yearn to connect with. It can be someone you've never met. The short answer is, it does not matter whom you write to or why, and it does not matter if they enjoy your writings. At the end of the day, they are your writings, and that is what we're trying to get at here. 2. Bring your toolkit. By this I mean to say, bring anything and everything you can use in a creative manner to bear on what you're attempting to do. If long monosyllabic novels are your choice, do that. If instead you prefer morose poetry, go in that direction. Collect one-liners from television, movies, daily conversations, or books as long as they mean something to you. They are meaningful. From these, you can expand and expound on how they go with your life. Now we shall get into what I believe is required, for me at least. For you, it is almost assuredly something different. Morty's Rules for Writing Number 1. Have Fetishes. Now, I do not mean sexual perversions or persuasions, depending on your viewpoint. I mean tokens and tidbits from the world around you that hold meaning to your existence, as defined by Merriam Webster. A material object regarded with superstition or extravagant trust or reverence. I, for example, have a set of chewing gum. The last cigarette I never smoked a specific brand of pen, and jewelry, such as an earring from a former lover, and a ring from a different deceased former lover. I also have a cheap watch to tell me how long I have been creating by timing it. These are the tidbits of the world that remind me why I do what I have done and what I will do. And this leads to rule number two, music or distraction. It's a scientific fact that music affects the brain in peculiar ways, forcing creativity and interaction that is, in other circumstances, difficult to create also especially with modern music, and by that I mean the lyrical music of the last hundred years. We identify and feel as the musician identifies and feels. Listen to music you've never heard of, music you hate, or music you love. These can get the creative juices flowing. Remember, without the Yellow Rose of Texas, Emily Dickinson is just another great poet. Without Jethro Tull, Stephen King's opus does not begin. Number three, mental illness is a blessing and a curse, as is weirdness or oddity. If you do not write the way you're supposed to, then that's the best writing you could ever possibly do. Be weird, be original, no matter how crazy it sounds or how much people want to snicker at you behind their hands. Keep writing about that magic flute with two legs that's only looking for a hamburger if that's what works for you. Rewrite Macbeth as a lesbian space soap opera. 
write a sentence or even two words, or the greatest Russian novel known to man. 4. Write to impress yourself, not anyone else. 5. If you, Jane, or John Doe do not feel that you can write what you wish to write as yourself, find a pseudonym or non diplume if you prefer. In adopting another guise, it can free you to write what you yourself may not have thought possible. Just ask Samuel Clemens or Eric Arthur Blair, or if you prefer more modern flair, ask Richard Bachman or Robert Galbraith. Number six. Do not lose your muse and never let it fail to amuse. Draw from lovely things. Excuse me. Drawing from lovely things is easy compared to writing that which destroys us. Don't shy away from drawing on the horrors of your life to create beauty, or drawing on the beauties of your life to create horrors. For example, those of you with children who love them dearly must ask, what does the story say that cannot be said by your love for them? In imagining the loss of them, you may find inspiration. Those of you that have lost a loved one, make them live forever, but with a stroke of your pen, in that they are never gone, if they are within your heart and within your memory. Seventh, and probably the most important thing I have suggested so far. Everything I have suggested has no meaning whatsoever unless you find meaning within it. If it helps you, use it. If not, call it Boulder Dash and make sure you never use it. In this, you may learn what is valuable to you and what is superfluous to you. By doing so, you have a start into a wondrous world that is as blank as the page you write on and created only by your own heart, soul, and mind. Remember that nothing is off limits. In creating, we invent and imbue worlds that cannot or should not be in our waking world. I will now sign off with living proof that creation can only go as far as you allow it to, and can be anything that you accept as worthwhile. Five frogs chase a rabbit because they need his boysenberry to get on a spaceship and rendezvous with Hades in the underworld. This nonsense is actually necessary, because no one ever envisioned before this creative moment five amphibians chasing a quadrupedal herbivore in order to secure passage on a mechanical environmental evacuation apparatus with genetically modified foods in order to effect the launch of said rocket into the underworld beneath our feet. It is in these nonsenses that we may find our sense and our sense of wonder, no matter how senseless they are. Goodbye, good luck, good writing.